In this clip, we'll be learning how to composite our channels together. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and start putting some of these channels together. So I've got my diffuse here, and I'm just gonna be using merges to do this. So I'll hit the tab key, and merge was the last thing I typed, so I can just hit enter. Now, for now, I'm not actually going to be merging with a background image. You can see all I've got here, um, just, so, just to make it easy for you guys, are just the passes coming out. So I would actually start with one of these as my background, so I can actually pull it over a little bit farther, view the merge, and then we'll hook the A into the next one. So I'm basically using the diffuse as my background and the specular is going over the top of it. So this is what it looks like with the specular and that's what it looks like with just the diffuse. That's what the specular looks like by itself and then this is them combined. Now this looks kind of similar to our read node but not quite the same. You can see there's still some information missing. So I'll add in another merge and let's do the same here. And now we're adding in our indirect diffuse. So to see you know, what it looked like before that, I can hit the D key and you can see how that indirect diffuse kind of casts up this little sort of green hue on it, which the person who rendered this out for us knew that we were putting this into a scene where we're going to have kind of this field. So this helps us to be able to, um, you know, kind of put the robot into that shot. Now I'm also going to add another merge here. And if I just drop this onto the viewer pipe, you can see it automatically hooks up the B for us. And then I can hook up the A over here. And now we've got our indirect specular, which is a pretty um, pretty light little pass. And then last one, our refraction. So again, I'll just drop it right onto the viewer pipe to automatically hook up the B. And when we add refraction, now we get the eyes of the robot. So when I look at this compared to this, it's a you know, pretty much identical. So you might ask yourself, why not just use this? Why do we even need all of these? Well, let's say that I want to kind of come in here and on that indirect diffuse where we're getting kind of that green, I actually want that to look a little more green. So what I could do is kind of pull these over a little bit here and then add a color correct node maybe in between there. So I'm not color correcting anything else except for the indirect diffuse by putting that there. So let's actually just add a color correct node, which is called color correct. This is the first, you know, you're seeing this. And we'll just drop it right there between the indirect diffuse. So that's the only thing that it's affecting before it goes into the merge. And whenever we do this, you know, this is a, a node that's got a lot of things going on. Most of the time, though, you're just going to be messing with the gain whenever you want to do a color correction like this. And so I would just go into the little kind of color panel here. Um, so this is the in panel color picker. And when I click this, I can then just come over here and push it more towards the green. So you see how he gets a little more green now, if I take it all the way, obviously it's too much, but I can push that up just a little bit more green if I if I want to. So it's those kinds of things, those types of really, you know, little changes that go a long way. And remember, you know, that indirect specular and the, um, yes, the indirect specular, we don't really have hardly anything going on there. So let's say we wanted to make that brighter. Well, I could add another color correct and I would put it after that indirect specular. And this time I could just take the gain itself and turn it up and that's going to make it way brighter in that indirect specular. Now I don't want to do it too much. So maybe just right up there to a two. And now when I view that, you can see we've got just a, maybe a little bit brighter looking robot. So it all depends on the art direction you're getting. But having these individual passes allows you to composite the robot in a way where you have way more control over those individual passes rather than just having to, you know, manipulate the whole thing. So that's why we do it in the way that we do. And also, 
you know, naming these this way makes us really easily be able to just kind of jump over there. If you don't like the way this looks, if you're kind of a stickler like me where you want this to be just sort of perfectly all in a line, you can add another dot node. So hold control and just pull that over there. So that looks a little bit nicer. All right, so now we've got some color corrects in place um, with our shuffles and our merges, and you've actually just composited your first set of channels. So great work. Now let's actually move on to our next part of our series here, where we're going to be creating some rotoscopes, how to create and use rotoscopes. So that's going to be module three of this course. So I hope you'll join me in the next module to figure out how we can better start integrating the robot with our background.